Welcome back, it's Chris from the Hagen Factory. So we've got over Broadford, uh, all the bikes are running. We came over with three running bikes. They've all had a bit of a tune up, a bit of a clean up. A few issues on most of them, but uh, it's all sorted. So we're back onto the 350 Velo build. So we'll get onto that today. We've got a bit of, a few tech tips from Alan, my father, on the clutch. Uh, what books you should read about the clutch and where to get the parts, what parts you should use. And um, we've had about 120,000 views now. So we, in the last couple of weeks, we've had about 60,000 views, so extra views, so that was fantastic. Um, so I'll let you have a look at uh, what Dad's up to with the clutch, and then we'll just go over with all the build issues. Uh, with lining this up here, um, there's a few on this, uh, but we've got a great starting point. Uh, the engine's sitting in the right spot. So we just need to align everything, so, and that's a bit of an issue, but we will get there. Right, so today we're going to sit the clutch on, uh, so then we can work out the alignment. So we're just at a bit of a starting point here. Uh, it's a fair way out at the minute, but uh, Dad's here, Alan, and uh, we'll go through it with him, and he'll give us a few pointers on where everyone goes wrong. <laughs> Righto. Righto. This is a Veloset clutch. You can see how thin it is. It actually goes on first, and then the sprocket is actually on the outside, like so. This is the most misunderstood piece of machinery in, uh, in motorcycling. You'll never get it to work right unless you really understand how it works. Um, they made these in three plate, seven plate and nine plate. The last of the big valets had a nine plate. But these seven plate clutches are excellent when you get them set up right. You'll never have any trouble with them. And they're very light. You can pull the clutch in with one finger. Something that I really like about them. So um, what we'll do is we'll uh, start to fit it on here so that we can do the sprocket alignments and um, we'll see how we go with that. Yeah. Okay, this is um, the clutch spacer. Well, it's not really the clutch spacer, it's one I've just made up just to get the distance right. But uh, they're all different on each uh, clutch, but that is uh, five eighths of an inch thick that way and that gives you the correct spacing for the clutch out from the gearbox. So we'll remove the uh, clutch retaining nut. And we'll slide the spacer on so it's back against the gearbox. Now, this is the clutch, this is the clutch actuating mechanism. Um, it, it goes in here, like so. That's so just a big thrust washer. That's a big thrust washer yep. in there. And there's a pin in, in behind there, and it has this action. It's not much, but once you get it set up, it's really good. Okay, so it only pivots on one side. It only pivots on one side. It, yeah, pivots, okay. in, it pivots in a little piece that goes in here and just has a wire clip over it with yep. two screws. And it has shims behind the pivot because when you set it up, you've got to have that square to the gearbox. So yes. it might come out a little bit like that. And you've got to have it square. That's very important. So we won't fit this piece in today. We'll leave that out today and we'll just fit the, the clutch on. Now... I've just got to reassemble the clutch here, so assembled the clutch in uh, just roughly, just so that we can fit it on, just to try and get some measurements of that, just get slides on the spline there, like, like so, <laughs> like, so. like so, okay, so that's where the clutch will sit, okay, so then what we need then is we need a shim washer, Like this one, we'll just put just a few random springs in today. How many springs do they normally have? No, oh, there's a lot in there. There is a lot, and Valisets, uh, sorry, the um, Thruxtons have 20 springs, which is too many. Yeah, okay. Um, and with the modern bonded um, plates you can get now, uh, I've taken my Thruxton back to uh, 16 springs, and it's yeah. fine. Because so who supplies the new bonded? The Valisette right. Owners Club in Melbourne. Yep. Okay. Yep, they have a good... So you can get all new clutch parts from them, can't you? Get all new yep. clutch parts, correct. Just there, the one that slides in, so... Just 
Let's sitting up on the. Yep. Let's pop that. Yep. No idea. It's a lot of work, isn't it? A lot of bits to hold. Oh, I usually, what I usually do is assemble it on the bench yeah. and tie it together with a couple of bits of string. <laughs> yeah, okay. And yep. then you slide on the end, just snip yeah. the bits of string off. Yep. But uh, we'll just see what's actually going on here. It's a bit of a nightmare to assemble these. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then we, we this, this is the locking nut. This one's, you can see that this one's been done and undone many times. It's quite mutilated, but I do have uh, a brand new one here, which just needs the holes drilled in it. Well, uh, one that I had made up some time ago. So the shim goes on like that. And then this goes in. And it screws onto that thread in there. Whoop. And um, yeah, and that, and that'll just hold the clutch on. Okay, now we've got the clutch just roughly sitting on there. It's locked back against that spacer. So that's where the clutch will sit. Now, the inboard clutch has some advantages is that the sprocket, the countershaft sprocket's actually on the outside. So they're very, very easy to change. You don't have to take the clutch off and disassemble half the motorbike to change the countershaft sprocket, which is really good. It uh, makes things quite simple. But the downside is, when we put it in a different frame like this, we have massive alignment issues. You do. Yeah. That's correct. But so... That, that's how it goes. What's the biggest problem you find with these clutches that people don't understand? Which is the, which is the bit? Well, because these clutches have been used since the 1930s, um, people buy a massive big handful of spare parts and they mix all the spare parts up like the thrust pins that go in the back. There's uh, two different lengths thrust pins. There's two different lengths um, spacers. The thicknesses of, of the back and front plates vary from clutch to clutch, as does the thickness of the chain wheel and um, the length of the springs. And people just build them out of a- uh, Box of bits? A, lot, a box of parts, yeah, yeah, lots of spare parts. And, uh, and then they don't understand the operation of it. It's really important that you understand the operation of it and you can't have any tension on the cable at all because these clutches are so light that if there's any tension on the cable, the clutch will slip. Yeah, right. Okay. So how much movement on the cable? Like an eighth? An or... eighth of an inch movement yep. they recommend in the book. Yep. Yep. And um, I've built quite a few of those clutches over the years and if you use all the correct parts, um, they work very well. There's right. no problem if you use all the correct parts and now you can buy modern bonded plates uh, instead of having the old uh, segmented plates. And um, because they are bonded, you get a lot more surface area, uh, which means that they don't tend to slip, which is really good. Now, out of all your Valiset books, which one would you recommend for clutches? Oh, or they're all. I've got brushes? an old book by, uh, written by a guy called Burgess. It was written back in the 40s. If you can get one of those, they've got the most information in them. Fantastic. And uh, even the modern uh, Haynes manual it tells you all the incorrect information as to how to adjust the clutch. Okay. <laughs> they, what they do is, what they tell you to do is the opposite to what you should do. Okay. Yep. So, so that's probably why a lot of people exactly. make the mistake too, because a lot of people trust those magazines, because it, um, manuals. Yeah. Because they cover everything, those manuals, don't they? They do. Cars, motorbikes, buses, trucks, yep. you know, very H common. Hanes are very well known. Yep. And, uh, yeah, but they do actually tell you to uh, adjust the clutch in reverse to what you should do it. Okay. Yep, yep. Well, there's so, a good tip. Yeah, so if you've got a Hanes manual and you want to adjust your valet clutch, don't read it. Yeah, throw it away. Yeah, and get one of the old, uh, the old books. Excellent. I've got a few old books. I've got quite a library on Valiset books. And um, the old Burgess one. It's got a lot of information. It tells you about all the different cams, which there's a multitude of cams, but it tells you for what particular model they were made for. And um, it even tells you slightly different tappet clearances than some of the other books. Um, yeah, there's a lot of variations, but the old Burgess book is as good as you'll get. Fantastic. Well, I'll have to keep an eye out for another one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Mine's got... Uh, um, you know, a few dog-eared pages, and you can always tell people that have had clutch trouble because when you 
get a Velo set uh, manual, the, the clutch page is always covered in greasy yeah, finger filthy. Prints. Yeah, <laughs> you can always <laughs> solve a problem with any vehicle yeah. when you open up the manual and see, just go to the greasiest pages. See where yeah. the dirty fingerprints are. Yeah, excellent. But the clutch on this um, should be excellent once we get uh, all the new parts for it. Yeah, well, so we're just going to keep at it and just start aligning a few things up. Yep. I'll go through a bit more of that later. Yep. I'll get a bit more footage so everyone can see our starting point, but I think we've got a really good starting point. We've got a bit of a plan in mind. Righto, so next Saturday, the 21st of April, we'll be over at Malden. We're just going to go over there for the British Rally. The British Rally is actually Newstead, but they go to Malden for lunch. They block off the main street. There'll be hundreds of bikes there, so... Weather permitting, we'll be there with the 500 Veloset Hagen. Uh, we'll be wandering around with their new t-shirts on, hopefully they'll be here by then. Uh, if you want to have a chat, come and see us. Um, it's a great weekend over there, so, but we just can't uh, be away for another weekend. We've had a lot of weekends away with all this stuff lately, so we'll be there for the day. Uh, my beautiful wife Caroline, she's going to come with me. So, and Dad will be over there as well, so uh, yeah, come over and have a chat. Now, the same as every other week, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell everyone, let's bring Hagen's back. Thanks.